where it wants, right? Um, so, but yeah. Uh, Switzerland. Enoch, what about the people who speak angelic angelic language? Are they speaking demon tongue? Yes. Angelic uh, language? No such thing as an angelic language. Anybody who speaks in tongues or anything like that, you can't speak... Anybody who says they can speak as an angel, why would you speak as an angel? An angel would only be an author of confusion to speak in a language that you do not understand. That you do not understand. No, Nobody's going to talk in a language that cannot be understandable except by a few people. That's code talk. Can't be. Right? And the new earth where he shall reign forever. Yes. Yes. Uh, what about America again? Uh, America's uh, Babylon. Uh, America's Babylon. Not all Americans. Remember that. It's not Americans. Not the people. But America. Where it is. It's, it's, it's marked. Because it's soil. But 90% of the world is. There's bloodshed spilt on all the land. Right? So all has dem demonic presence. Because of the bloodshed. That's why all things are being erased. Oops. The light language. You know. I'm sorry. The light language? Yeah. Uh, truth or wisdom? Uh, sorry. What do you think of the Avatar movies? Is there any truth or wisdom in there? If so, what? Of course, Avatar is the name. Aravat, rearrange the letters. Avatar, A-V-A-T-A-R, spelt Aravat, A-R-A-V-A-T. Exact same amount of letters, exact same thing. When you read about the Avatar, it is about a blue people sky beings blue coming down to another dimension an earthly plane where they are on a high holy mountain they live in the tree of life where they all live the roots of it is of pure gold which america wants to steal and infiltrate to get into so yes has all kinds of has all kinds of truths that are in it I don't know about the new ones. I haven't seen them, but yes. But yeah, yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. Yeah, it's talking about beings that are in a whole different dimension. You know? Uh, best summer one. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Uh, just gave me a reason to rewatch it. Uh, fallen stars in Revelations. Could that be a metaphor for nuclear bomb? Nope. Fallen stars are the other angels for the rebellious ones who fell from grace. That's what it talks about. For he wiped out a third of the stars from the skies. Um, that is a rebellious thing. Because stars are luminance. Luminance in the skies are luxurious. Uh, lux, L-U-X. In Hebrew, meaning uh, lament uh, for Yalal. Losing former brightness. Lucifer being a light bearer, meaning a star. The North Star. I saw a star fall, for that's why it's star worship. So it all has to do with those, right? So, um, so they are fallen angels. That's what stars are. That's why people idolize stars, right? Uh, what's that once? Uh, what's that thing? I, uh, American idols make you make you stars, to make you stars, make you why they call them stars, right? So yeah. Uh, Luciferus. Luciferus is also uh, one of the things that are in diseases, uh, in uh, the old jibby jabbies. Uh, do we have the lights under the most heaven? Do we have all? Do we all have lights under the most heaven? I don't know what the Lee stands for. And NASA means in Hebrew to deceive. Yes, it's not NASA, but it's NASA, which is pronounced NASA. Correct though. Not to be, not to get technical. Uh, thou shalt not worship false idols. Correct. So did the Most High hear Abel's blood from the earth when though he was a Nephilim? Yes, he did hear his blood because this is why. He was not, not his fault that he was born into a Nephilim. But when he found the ways, he followed the ways of Adam and he was a good person. Hence why it says that he was a tiller of the land, a farmer, meaning a shepherd. So he was a good person. Uh, Abel, or Cain, sorry, was a hunter, meaning he was barbaric, meaning that he hunted um, and killed. 
So he was a bad person. So he did see that on there, and yeah, he, he does feel uh, remorseful for him. That's the one thing that I still haven't been able to put together completely yet. Why? When it do, did and does say that uh, the angel was sent out to get rid of all of thy children, and thou shalt see thy children die in the great day when they shall be hurled in the fire. So... Now, I know this is only a song. I know this is a song. It's called Revolu This is a revolution a revelation. A revolutions by Diplo. Um, and it says, Fallen people, listen up. It's never too late to change your love. Uh, so break free to the other side. Um, it's a revelation or a revolution. Um, so it calls out the fallen angels. But this is the thing. It says that they are to be denied. Fallen angels. Nephilim, which are the bastard children, the reprobites, who follow their ways. Because the females are known as sirens, the males are known as Nephilim. So I don't know how... It's very touchy, that one. It's very touchy. Because there could be where there was. Because if this... if the scripture tells us, I shall not hold sins of a father against the son and the son against the father. Can a Nephilim walk in righteousness? If you were to receive new garments, they shall be purified. If they shall be purified and receive new garments, then anyone can change, right? So the scripture tells us there is mercy even on the Nephilim. Fallen angels? No. We know the petitions were given. They will never be accepted back in. I won't say never. I won't say never. But the scripture tells us that they were condemned. That's what scripture tells us. So I can't say never because... There could be something, and something tells me not to say never. So there could be something that we have to research and find that'll show us that there was mercy on that, right? Uh, is Noah a Nephilim? Nope, Noah's not a Nephilim. They were thought Noah was a Nephilim because Noah came out white and had uh, white hair and rosy cheeks and blue eyes. And when he opened his eyes and his mouth, he spoke the words of the Lord and lit up the house. Lamech then went to the ends of the earth and became frightened because he seen and yelled out to Enoch, hear me, hear me, hear me. And he spoke on to him and says, what bothers you? And he says, my son, he is not regular. He, it looks like the angels may have done what they've done prior, which is crazy because this is talking about with before this is Noah being born. So this tells us that they're Nephilim, which we knew because obviously Cain and Abel. But the Nephilim, um, they thought that it was him um, that he, uh, because he looked so different from the other people, then said, no, he is not that way. Now, many will say that Noah's an albino man, etc. But I say that there is three types of skins that are out there. There's melanated, emelanated, and femelanated. I don't know if you guys know this. People can be dark-skinned and be emelanated and femelanated. Not just melanated. So, most people think when you see dark-skinned people, it's melanated skin. No, there's three types of skin that make dark. So, um, you can be femelanated and still be light-skinned and look white. But yet you are a, a dark skin descendant. So yeah, it's really cool. Uh, femelinated. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it just means that your skin uh, just doesn't absorb uh, sunlight or sunlight more. That's all it means. So, uh, and I personally think it's just a bunch of science jargon that's a bunch of bullcrap to create more division. Personally. Because he does not... 
he does not judge thy flesh, he judges thy spirit. So what does it matter about a person's color? Right? And if he judges thy spirit, then what does the flesh matter? Do not judge the outer temple. Uh, no, the Savior was not melanated. The Savior did not come into the end of days. That's why even the Jews did not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. The teachings teach us that the Messiah shall come in the end days. Hence why Jesus tried to say those were the end days and the prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD. But yet it tells us all prophecies have to be fulfilled through the Messiah. We're still seeing prof prophecies fulfilled today. So, he couldn't have been the Messiah. He couldn't have been. What color is the Messiah? Uh, the Messiah didn't say what color he would be. It didn't say what color the Messiah would be. Ha, Shiva, Shivanism. Uh, uh, Shiva, okay, so Shiva is basically the same thing in Hinduism as what the Bible teaches. There's Shiva, Kali, and Dharma. Dharma? I think it's Dharma. Anyways, and they follow the same thing. Uh, Shiva, it, that's not Shiva. That's Kali. Many people think that that's Lord Shiva. But look at it. It's Lord Kali. Kali, which you think is Shiva, is the Lord of destruction of the universe who dances the universe into creation, that dance the universe into destruction, which is between building 11 and 12 or 12 and 13 um, in the CERN uh, buildings. I know what you're talking about. It's a 13 or 3 meter tall uh, bronze uh, statue uh, ring dancing through coming through a portal yeah uh, if you want to see the Nephilim and the Titans to take a look at the mountains and you can see them all turned to rock uh, partially partially uh, my, some people contacted me on the TikToks about that um cause okay so through scripture, it, te it teaches us that Adam was 20 to 40 feet tall, depending on what scripture you read. Nephilims were 90 feet tall. The giants known as angels were up to 400 feet tall. So for an angel to be up to 400 feet tall, and the angels, so you'd have to find all the scriptures to show you, and then prove that it would be that person who was turned into rock. Now I know Azazel tells us he was buried under rocks. He was the only one though. The rest went to the Gregorian prison, which is in the fifth heaven. Meaning, hence why Job, Satan was allowed to go into the heavens, not the heaven, the heaven, the sky, when the angel was speaking with uh, the Lord was speaking with the angels and Satan came and said to him, have you seen Job? Again, Michael defeating Satan in end days and throwing him from the heavens. So we know that they were up there. So what angels were then thrown under rocks? We don't know any. We know people were turned to salt. Lot, his wife, and the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, we know this, um, but they were turned to salt. And we can't say that we were known that they were, um, that they were Nephilim or fallen angels. Who's the dragon? The dragon is Lucifer, which is Baal God, God Baal or God Rel. But Baal, B-A-A-L, is who you would know as, which is the half man, half woman, as above is below, got boobs, man and woman, got both parts, half goat, half man, uh, saying that is Alpha the Omega and all that kind of stuff, the false Messiah or Gad, yep, Gad, and G-A-W-D, God, um, but yeah. Uh, what are the skins they talk about concerning Enoch? What are, th what, what are the skins they talk about concerning Enoch? What skins? The serpent is the kundalini effect. The kundalini effect is that. It's talking about a snake that wraps around your vertebrae and attacks your pineal gland. But most people think the kundalini effect is a good thing. Opening up the third eye and all this other stuff. 
Sorry if I didn't answer somebody's question. I feel like I kind of cut short on something there. Uh, the rise of the sacred sacration through the spine to the crown from the root to the crown. Uh, that's not, Yeah, but that's not the corona. That's uh, what they've uh, taught in Hinduism of the, ka, uh, the kundalini effect. The crown, it is not to be the rays of the crown. Uh, I saw something doing, uh, someone doing yoga and got possessed. You know, Yeah, uh, yoga is uh, demonic uh, uh, positions. Downward facing dog. Uh, I know it represents a dog because the way they stretch and all that other stuff, but it's actually demonic. Even hand, uh, hand um, sign language um, and stuff like that. Um, all of them do that. Not so much the symbols that they're doing, but as they're doing their things, somebody told me about it because they used to do this uh, for a church and didn't realize until later on that it was satanic, then they stopped. How they're moving their hands, if they had a pencil and they were drawing really quickly while they're doing all their shit like that, if they had a pen in their hand, they're drawing shapes of faces and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. And I seen something when she, after she was telling me or I seen something before and I didn't pay attention to it. But yeah, it was kind of weird. Uh, what's going on there, Joshua Wood, brother? Uh, Sumerian tablets tell the story of Noah and giants were uh, petrified. Yes, they were petrified. They sat there and begged Noah or uh, Enoch um, in the heavens to write a petition to the Most High and ask him for forgiveness. And he said, I'll go and ask. But as he went to uh, sleep in a vision and the Most High told him, no. Do not pray for these, for these things shall pray for man. For it is not right for an angel to ask man, but or for a man to ask an angel. It's not right for them to ask a man to uh, uh, ask for their forgiveness. For the angels should beg uh, the, uh, the man. It shall not be, it should not be for them to do this. The, basically, the moral of the story is, no, you taught the people these things and you cursed man because of your teachings. And now you're asking a man to forgive you for what you've done to its kind. And it's not right for it to be that way. All he wants to do is argue and others are trying to learn. He is muted. Uh, I don't know who you guys are talking about. Uh, going on? I'm good. Enoch, if someone says in Jesus' name, what happens to a person? Christians keep saying they cast out demons. Uh, cast out demons? Uh, they don't cast out demons. They do not cast out demons in Jesus' name. It's just like me calling a... Uh, me calling... Uh, okay, so... The crime boss sits there and sends his lugs here to collect money. You owe uh, rent for your shop. You got to pay grease or pr protection taxes. And I turn around and they're going to break my arms. And I says, well, call Tony. Let me talk to him. So then they're like, Tony wants to talk to you. And I'm like, yo, man, can you call your goons off here? Um, I, I give you your respect. No problem. And uh, I'm sorry. I'll pay you in a week or two. Come back and see me then. Okay, no problem. See you in a week or two. And then he calls his goons and tells them, yeah, don't worry, man. Leave him alone. He, he knows who I am. And then, boom, they're, they're good to go. Why men shouldn't shave their beards? Why men aren't supposed to shave their beards? Same with women. When did they make razors? Tell me when razors came. It was Azazel who gave swords. It was, uh... Uh... I can't remember the angel's name off the top of my head right now. Who taught people how to beautify themselves. The ladies with eyelashes and colors and all that kind of stuff. Um, not supposed to. Most high didn't make us to serve the flesh. We're not meant to serve the flesh. The only thing we're supposed to serve the flesh is, is with foods when we become faint. We're supposed to just walk the fields and just be like, not hippies, but just, I don't know. People of the land, free. We're supposed to just wander the earth and just be happy with everything. And there's fruits on trees that's not polluted and grow to know all these things, right? That's how we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be under governments. We're supposed to respect people's lands. When you walk through a place and there's a person who owns a farmland, can you house us here? 
We would love some food if we need to work a day just to get enough food to get us through. We don't mind doing so, and that's how it was supposed to be. Even before, if you broke the law or broke it, did something wrong, the person, not to slave you, but was to board you in their house. Usually they sat in a shack or the barn, a back of the house. You would work, pay your debt off. After your debt was paid, you were given the option. You're a great worker. Would you like to live in my house? And you can make wages now, and I will still feed you because you're a great worker. And that slave was given the option to say, no, I'll be on my way. I'm sorry that I stole from you or I, 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 I did something wrong or something like that. Those were just scales back in the day. Now we're all under the slave of Satan. We all work under a sin number. So uh, well, I'm not sure what it's called down in America, but we in Canada, it's a sin number, social insurance number, sin. We work under them. They tax us. Thou shall not tax thy brethren. Not supposed to. Our money goes to all kinds of people that they don't need to go to. If you didn't get taxed, you are under God's law. Where then you shall be under his law, law, of, the law of the land, that if you do not give a tith or follow the rules of when you do grow foods and all that stuff, uh, you shall donate it to the earth. Uh, do not eat the fruits of the first seed, for that shall be donated to the earth, for the Lord has provided it to you. Those fresh fruits and all that sugars and all that go into the roots, replenishing, making everything all nice and good again. And then your next one is supposed to be even better, etc. Social security number. Okay, thank you guys. Um, but yeah, so that's what you're supposed to do. There's a whole bunch of rules that we used to follow, but then they changed everything. They didn't want us to unite. They didn't want us to share. I remember 20 years ago, we used to be able to drive through the country roads and they used to have baskets of strawberries and have a little glass jar that you would drop your money in and take your basket and leave. Now, I'm like, Five years later, now they had to put lock boxes there. Then they started taking the lock boxes because they used tackle boxes and only did it for hours during the day when people were awake because people started stealing stuff instead. Now you can't even buy the stuff. You know, it's crazy. The world's changed so much. And it's because people have turned an eye and the standard has been, well, I'm not a bad criminal. They steal off of us. So we justify it, you know. I don't do any of the stuff. I don't do any of that stuff no more. I used to be guilty of it, though. Like, I used to go in and just eat food while I was walking through a store or something like that and whatever. Like, I, I didn't think or think like that before. And then as you get older, you realize you can't do that stuff because you learn that when you steal from a store, prices because of loss, even though their insurance covers it, they still have to up the prices on other stuff. Now you have hardworking people having to pay even more money when they did nothing wrong. So now they got to pay for that shit. That's not cool. It's not cool. And it's not until you hear somebody say that and then it makes stuff click. But instead, we all just sit there and judge somebody and say, oh, you shouldn't be a thief. That's just wrong. Well, why not? Tell them the steps, what happens in that, and it will make them think. You're making it hard for somebody else trust in the most high if you need food there's places out there ask for things don't be ashamed most people are full of shame because they don't want to seem like their pride where they have to ask somebody for a handout and then the worst is most of the people they ask for help from is their family and they treat them like shit because they finally see them down and out so they're like finally i got them and they think they're better than each other brother and sister sibling war right so it sucks it sucks a stranger will help you out and give you more help than, than your own family will. Um, there was a cool program that I watched uh, uh, or I was listening to about a person. And um, it says this. There's a group of people standing in the thing. Uh, I'll answer this in a second. Which, uh, what, what, you know, what about kids who know bad, who know bad, good, but do bad things? Uh, I don't know what you mean. Enoch, what about kids who know bad, good, but do good things? I don't know what you mean by that. I don't know what you mean by that. What were old Norse religions and were they bad? Yes, all religions bad. All religions control. You're not supposed to have religion. You're supposed to have a relationship with the Creator. 
right? It's your own personal relationship. Your church ain't going to be persecuted for you. You're going to be persecuted for you, right? Um, do they get judged? No, not until a child is old enough to understand the difference between right and wrong. Not until a child is old enough. Child means anything. You got to remember, people used to live for hundreds and thousands of years. Well, up to a thousand years. Used to live for many years. So a child is different because it's a childlike mind. All of us mature at a different age and we learn these things. Not until you're spiritually awakened, then you realize, whoa, I'm making a difference and I'm going to change my life. But for a child, child are innocent. You got to remember, children are just obedient to their parents, right? That's why you shall pay for the sins, not your children, if you do bad things to your children or feed them bad stuff. It ain't their fault. They're just obeying. They fear you. They respect you in that sense, right? They don't know any better. They inspire to be uh, understand things through you. That's why when you look at children, we shoo them away, and yet our children, it's it's may it's it, this this is the craziest thing that I'll explain to everybody, and this is how I'll open up your mind. Our children look to us as superheroes, correct? They love us, either the mom or the dad. They love us. They think we're the coolest people that are out there. But in all honesty, our children are our superheroes. That's how it should be. Because they should inspire us how to have that childlike innocence and to love the little things and appreciate the You can give a kid a cardboard box and they will make so much cool stuff out of it with their imagination. We lose that. When did we lose our imaginations to do that fun shit? With cardboard boxes, paper bags, and dumb shit that we look at these kids and say like, what the heck is wrong with you? But then you realize you were just like them and you were so happy. You have to ask yourself, what are you seeing that your imagination does that? And when the freaking frack did we lose ours to try to be so mature and come into this? Because you see them and they look like a crazy person. If you've seen a grown-up act as a child, you say, is this guy talking to imaginary friends? What is he, high on freaking whoopets or, you know, uh, uh, glue or crystal meth? Like, what's this guy on right now? Right? So, but as a kid, it's the coolest thing. And you know they ain't on drugs. So, you got to think, man. They are our biggest inspiration. Uh, that's why I say, like, kids want to be like us. We need to be more like kids. If we were more like kids, we wouldn't have racism. We would not have sex, sexism or whatever you call that. Um, we would not have people picking on people for their their. their